it just feels it feels a bit video gamey. I don't I don't really know how to articulate what I mean. Um, well, it is a video game too. It is. It, <laughs> to be fair, it, it is a video game. <laughs> this video game is far too video gamey. <laughs> Hello, we're back with Pod'em Up episode 24. We've got our usual book club entry this month, which is Knuckles Chaotix for the 32X, but we're throwing in some Nintendo action too, as we look at brand new unofficial Nintendo magazine, Ninty Fresh, issue 1. Hello, welcome to episode 24 of Pod em Up. My name's Ollie. I'm joined as always by my friend Tibbs. Hello, Tibbs. All right. All right. What's um what's been going on? What have you been playing? What have you been doing? Um Fall Guys. Fall Guys, yes, yes. Great little game. Yeah, I, I saw a little a little trailer for it. It's sort of a multiplayer sort of racing thing, it's, but with little guys, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a battle royale, so you've got sixty people and it's the sort of last last man standing these yeah. little multicolored jelly bean guys and that's it uh you get 60 people you drop them in a stage and there'll be um there's like several stages um mm-hmm. that are randomly selected so there's like one of them where you have to run an obstacle course uh so say the first one isn't the obstacle course one 60 of the little jelly bean guys all run down the obstacle course together and the first 35 qualify and the rest are eliminated and then the next round it'll be um, they've got like a a round where half the little jelly bean guys have got tails and the other half have to try and grab the tails and anyone who hasn't got a tail at the end of the two minute time limit they're eliminated so then you're down to sort of 20 Mm -hmm. and there'll be you know it's just round after round after round until you just get down to one person and they win oh that's cool it's really good. It's really good fun. Um, right. If you get eliminated early, can you watch the rest of the, the rounds? Yeah, yeah oh, you can spectate good. and watch the rest, or you can just drop yeah. out and, you know, there's, there isn't, there's not much faff with a game. Um, you know, you if from the time you drop out to getting straight back into another game is like two or three button presses. So you, you, you can That's get good. straight back into the action quite quick if you want to. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really good. Um, I would say I'm not keen on the. It's got lots of microtransactions. No. Um, you earn. I can't remember what the kudos I think they call it in in mm. the game, but you earn points um, for every every event that you take part in, and then you can exchange those points to buy costumes for your little guy or different patterns for him and um, color schemes, things like that. Just it's all it's all cosmetic stuff. Um, but you can buy uh, packs of these these kudos points um, to you know bolster your your inventory and, and buy some of the the more expensive costumes and things. Uh-huh. And the costumes are split up as well into sort of top half and bottom half. So if you wanted to get the ninja costume, you have to buy the ninja trousers, <laughs> and then you have to buy the ninja hat separately. Of um, course. You know, I wouldn't mind if it was a free-to-play game, um, but if you buy it on Steam, I think it's about 15 quid or 20 quid. Um, yeah. If you get it on PlayStation, it's currently it's this month's PlayStation Plus game. So, oh, um, 
you know, if you've got PlayStation Plus, you've got it for essentially for free. Um, but after that, it, you know, you're looking at, the, I imagine it will be around the same sort of price point, so about 15 or £20. Pounds. And I don't really think microtransactions of that kind have any place in a game that's being charged for, really. No, not really. Uh, it doesn't no. really... Don't really gel with me that, but it is pure. It is just cosmetic stuff. So you know, you I, don't get. You're not going to get any competitive advantage by buying anything. You could. I think that's uh, the only way. If you have to do microtransactions, that's the only way to do it. Really, you can't really block off content. Actual content. I wouldn't no. have thought if you're charging from the game in the first place. You know. I would rather they just went free to play with it, though. If yeah. if that's if that's the way they're going to do it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's obviously. Based on how popular it's been online and the fact that the servers, you know, I'm still getting the occasional server error now. Um, mm. You know, it's almost a, a week since it was launched, I think. So it's obviously, you know, it's it, popular. Yeah. It's it's doing well. Yeah. Um, I can understand if they weren't sure if it was going to be a hit or not, and they needed to recoup the the cost of development and things like that. Um, I would say as soon as they've recouped the cost of development, if they made it free to play, um, mm. it would be a much better proposition, I think. But um. Yeah. Yeah, other than that, I also played uh, Carrion. Have you seen that? Uh, no, I haven't. I don't think so. You're anyway. a big mound of pulsating flesh with tentacles. Nice. Yeah, it's lovely. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, it's actually really well animated, animated. I've heard it been described as a reverse horror game. So right. you're basically playing the monster and you have to attack all the humans and escape this facility that you've been contained in. Um, it's not clear whether you're meant to be an alien or a genetic experiment or or something like that. Um, all you are is like a big mound of meat and you sprout some tentacles and you can you know, waggle the tentacles about, move some switches and you have to find different containment units hidden around the facility and every time you find one um, you can absorb the little fleshy innards and you're granted more skills. Oh. And event as you go on you um you can get um defensive skills where you can make yourself sprout spikes to make yourself invulnerable, you can like get a shield, you can increase your strength, you can bash down doors. And uh, it's got kind of a Metroidvania uh, type feel to it so you'll ha you'll be going back and forward across the map to you know once you unlock an ability to get through a certain area you'll have to yeah. navigate back yeah. to that and you know do that kind of thing it's very short um it's a very short little game um about four and a half hours to do i think mm, um but good. yeah really enjoyable all sign all kind of uh old school pixel art style and okay. quite su superbly animated really really impressive animation especially on the 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 tentacle creature. Um, All right, cool. What's that on then? That is on. I think it's on. on I think it's on everything. I played mm. it on Switch. Um, yeah. It's definitely on PC. Mm. Um, I would assume it's on the other consoles as well, but definitely Switch and PC. Mm. Um, Sounds like a really interesting idea. It is. It's a really interesting mm. idea. Um, and what's really cool as well, I hope more companies. Um, do this. I pre-ordered it from... I can't remember where it was. Um, limited Run Games are doing it, and I think it was Special Reserve Games are doing it as well. Mm. I think I ordered it from Special Reserve Games, and when you place your pre-order for that, you get a download code as well, so you can play it before you have... so you don't have to wait for your physical copy to arrive okay, in... Okay, that's cool. So you get like both. Like six months, so you get both. Oh, that's, that's a good idea. That's, that's a really good, good idea. Um, yeah. So I really hope... You know that's that proves to be a successful experiment for them, and you know future games do that because that's a really really good way of doing it. I think that's the best way of doing it because, as as we said pre previously with the Streets of Rage Four stuff, I was hesitant to to play too much of it before the the physical one came. But yeah. if you get the download with it, then you kind of it's kind of justified then, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's best mm. of both worlds then. You know, because. Yeah. I don't really like digital distribution if that's the only option, you know, is yeah. I, I, I'm much sure I, or 99 times out of 100, I'll prefer the physical edition than sort of a lockdown DRM digital thing. I just think it's, it's bad for bad for the hobby, really, because, mm. 
you know, I mean, there's a whole thing on Twitter at the moment about uh, the Scott Pilgrim versus the World game that came yeah, out a few years a, ago. And I saw a hint of that, yeah. Yeah, so you know, you can't you can't buy it now. If you wanted to buy it and you didn't get it then, there's no official legal way of you getting that game anymore. Exactly. And yeah. you know, that's a really bad thing for for the mm. hobby. So having it, you know, split across both ways, so you get the physical thing and you get a, a digital download included. I I'm I'm all for that. Hmm. Very good. Um, there's probably other bits and pieces I played. I think they're the, the two standout ones that have taken up the the bulk of my time this month. Mm. Um. Yeah, what about you? Uh, slim pickings this month, I'm afraid. Not not too much. Played a little bit more of uh, the things I mentioned last month. The only new thing I've started is um, is a game called Near Automata. Oh Near, yes, yes. Near Automata. Not sure how you say it really. Automata. Automata. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's good. It's nice. I've only I've only done a tiny little bit of it really, but um, it's kind of uh, I think it's a Square Enix game. Is that right? It is. Yeah. Yes. It's a spin off um, of the Dragon Guard series. Oh, I don't know that. This is my first uh, foray into it, but um, it's nice. You play as a, a sort of a, a female robot, um, humanoid sort of person. Uh, it's like an action platformer, but uh, the first stage at least has, has some really nice co- sort of callbacks to various kind of retro shooting sorts of games, all sorts of like vertical shooters, horizontal shooters, twin stick uh, ones, uh, even on rails. It's got like lo- loads of little bits, and then it goes straight into the sort of the, the meat of it, which is the, the 3D action platforming um sort of combat kind of stuff um but it's yeah it's it's nice it's really nicely presented and plays really well handles really well um but yeah i haven't played too much into it but i'm looking forward to that it's been on yeah the, cool been on the old stack of ps4 games that i've been meaning to get around to for for quite a while i was gonna say i've actually got a copy sat on my shelf that i keep meaning to get around to but um mm. I yeah. haven't yet. The main reason is because, like I say, you don't have to play the previous games in the series to to get this one. Apparently, mm. you can just play this one on its own. If you've never yeah, played anything else in it, yeah. you can still get it. But I wanted to try and familiarise myself with the lore and all that kind of stuff first. So I keep thinking, oh, I'll play through Dragon Guard, I'll play through the the other games in the series and stuff mm. like that. And I've just never got around to it yet. So I might just <laughs> I might just forget about it and just start playing it. Uh, yeah, I would. I, I mean, just um, read a Wikipedia page and be done with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I think it's fairly standalone on it, as I say. But um, yeah, no, it's it's good. Recommended. Yeah, good. yeah, um, yeah not much else really. Um, I tried that because um, Xbox had an event in the in the within the last month, didn't they? Where they showed a few games that were coming in the to the Series X and that. Um, one of them was um, a game called Grounded, which is basically Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the game. Did you yes. see that? Yeah. yeah, had a little play of that because that, that's that's um, as a there's a demo of it on um, Xbox Game Pass for PC. So I tried that. Quite nice. Um, hmm. It's like a little survival kind of game. I, I quite like that because I can't think of many other games where you you play as a, a shrunken character and everything's kind of. You know, super sized, like all the insects. I like, look quite nice. The trailer, you know, everything because you can fight, you know, insects and things, and it just looked quite Ooh. cool. Interesting. Yeah. You you should say that. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll play into uh, my game pick this month. I think. Oh really? Okay. Mm. Oh right. Well, yes. oh, I'm not sure what to think about that right now. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that was quite. Yeah, fun. I saw. I saw that. Um, I tried to, it was advertised on Game Pass on the Xbox like it must have been like a month or two ago yeah. and it said preload the game now but it didn't give you any release date for it so I preloaded it but I didn't know it was even out yet because every time I went to play it it said oh you can play it from midnight on launch day but it didn't tell you what launch day was <laughs> so I, I don't just know I, I don't know if it's fully out yet because when no, you play it it's like, early access I think yeah it's early access I mean the, 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 the you can tell from the UI it's very sort of temporary at the moment you know it's not like the finished item at all I mean the gameplay is quite good I was watching a YouTuber, Jim Sterling, uh, do a, a playthrough of it, um, mm. and he he made it took great pains to explain how annoying the spiders were. He said the spiders everywhere, and they can sort of one one shot kill you out of nowhere. And he yeah. was just, he, t- he seemed to be very annoyed at the spiders. <laughs> I don't think I encountered the spiders. I didn't play for very long, I must admit. Okay. Um, but maybe I didn't get to the spiders. There were some pretty. Um, big insects around though i think um maybe it was like dung beetles or something that mm. i encountered i sort of went up to them because i kind of wanted to see what would happen and uh it turns out nothing particularly uh 
particularly good, really. Just basically just get killed by them completely. Um, so yeah, don't stay away from the dung beetles. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's good advice generally, really. Yeah, I, I would say so. Yeah, yeah. Um, not really, not really anything else to be honest. Um, I'm just trying to think. Um, uh, I started, um, I started replaying for some reason Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure Two on Steam because um, hmm. I haven't played them in a while. You know, a bit yeah. of fun. The sort of straddling either side of twenty years old now, so it's it's um it's just a pretty amazing fact in itself, really. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. No, I, I know it just makes you feel so old, doesn't it? I remember that that summer of two thousand one, where I just sort of I just played Sonic Adventure two the whole summer. Basically, it was it was amazing. Um, I think it still holds up today. That one in particular, I think it's pretty. Good. It does. It does. Yeah. They, I I I think people are really harsh on those games. Um, they can be. I think you know, within the within the Sonic community they're very well regarded but yeah. else, elsewhere Sonic Adventure in particular gets a hard time I don't it think it's aged really it's not aged time. well to be fair no no but I mean the the, the way people talk about it non-Sonic fans like the the, the gaming community at large yeah. they make you think it was sort of unplayable and broken and, and glitchy beyond belief and mm. I don't remember it being like that when I played it on Dreamcast and the no. the more modern releases it, it hasn't aged fantastically it's a little rough around the edges oh, but I mean yeah. it, it's plenty playable I think, it's still, I think it still so. holds up when you get in the actual Sonic levels they're really well designed I think yeah. you know, they they are fun to play you know the way that given that this was the first proper 3D Sonic game they managed to get the feeling of speed really well and sort yeah. of Separating that from sort of more uh, slower paced platforming, I think was uh, it was handled very good. And the fact that the camera sort of pans out when you go through a loop and everything, and for the time it was pretty phenomenal. To be honest. Oh, it's if amazing! You go, if you go back, it's one of the most impressive, game, visually impressive games of the time when it came out. Yeah, definitely. I remember seeing the um, one of the demo booths in a game shop, um, a local game shop, um, just showing that the the whale sequence from the first level yeah. on, on basically on loop, just because it was you know it was just jaw dropping. Oh time. yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So we've got um, two different features in this month, really, haven't we? We do. Of sorts, we got our regular book club pick which is going to be knuckles chaotix which is coming up in a bit um we've also well we've got i was going to say a couple of copies but we've just got one copy unfortunately. <laughs> mine didn't arrive no this is a ninty fresh this is a new uh, sort of fan made nintendo magazine yeah crowdfunded um, yeah crowdfunded yeah yeah uh first issues uh come out and um i've got it in my hands and it's it's very nice it's it's um it's a shame that we can't both talk about it i'll have mm. to sort of flick through and tell you about it really but before we do that, let's let's just talk about games magazines in general, shall we? Because yeah. Did you collect magazines a lot back in the day? I did. Yeah. 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 Which um, ones were the, your were your favourites? The main one for me was official UK PlayStation magazine. That was like my my go to. Yeah. Every month. Um, it's just a. Re- it was obviously you got a demo disc on the front cover, which was the mm-hmm. you know the big attraction, but yeah. the magazine itself was just really well written. Um, the I remember specifically. I've always wanted to find, track down this issue again. It's one of these things where I keep looking on eBay every now and then to see if anyone's selling off a, a you know a stack of old magazines that they've had. Yeah. Um, but the prices are always so stupid on there. It's like, well, I'm not really buying that just for a, a bit of nostalgia. So yeah, it, it is funny. You go on, you do look at these magazines, and I I think the the, the price on a lot of them is artificially inflated. Because oh, definitely. Yeah. You don't get a lot of people if you put, if you put, see them put up for bid. You don't get a lot of bidders for a lot of them i think there's yeah. less <laughs> there's less interest in games magazines than people think there are oh definitely definitely i, th- I think that a lot with a lot of stuff on ebay um yeah. you know people have this inflated idea of what stuff is actually worth yeah um, if you look at the the actual sold prices is you know the sold prices and the buy it now prices are, are usually quite off um oh, from each other so, yeah. Yeah. Um, but there was this one issue in particular because they obviously like most magazines had like a letters page where people could write in mm. and someone had wrote in to complain that the magazine used too many long words <laughs> um and they didn't like it they found it hard to understand and the magazine wrote back this really snarky response using all the most long, convoluted, obscure <laughs> words you can think of. And I just found it hilarious when I was a kid. I loved it. Mm. I thought it was just really, really witty uh, a response. And I wish yeah. I could find it now, um, see if it still holds up. But um, yeah, it's, it's great. 
the letters pages were always really fun, weren't they? In these yeah. Bags. I remember because the main one that I used to collect um, fairly religiously from about ninety, I'm going to say 90, early ninety six to I think two thousand and three or so was Games Master, the Games Master mm. Mag, which is the accompanying to the TV show. Um, I remember I, I once attempted to write in to that, and thank God they didn't print it because it, it was just thinking about what I put in there was just so cringe. Now it was something. <laughs> what did you write? I it was so, I can't remember, it was something about Croc. The, oh. the uh the game yeah and it was something about um i mean this was the time this is playstation and saturn and it was something about my anger that they were focusing more on the playstation version than the saturn <laughs> version and it was just <laughs> and i remember my dad picking up the letter because i asked him to send it and he sort of read it and he thought are you sure you want to send it <laughs> Uh, you know, it's just it's just typical sort of idiot teenage kind of yeah. anger. That's you know, great. The kind of, you get yeah, the kind you get on troll teenage yeah. trolls on the internet these days. But thank God they didn't print it because you know the Saturn version of Croc has got a glitch where if you put the disc in and turn the thing turn the to the console on, mm. it boots without him having a head. <laughs> really, the only way you can boot it so it works properly is to boot it for to boot the Saturn, go to the CD player, put the disc in, and then load it that way, and it'll work fine. But if you just load it as a normal disc, he loads without a head. Oh, I didn't know that. See, no. I never even owned Croc. I don't know why I was so angry about it, because I didn't even have it. <laughs> and I've, been, I've played it for like two seconds on, a, on an emulator and didn't like it. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I was so angry. Yeah, I think it was just sort of general... It's just you know, general fanboyism, isn't there? Back it was just general that's, fanboyism. That's, I mean, know. the Saturn wasn't doing well, and it was just sort of anger, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Games Master was um, was a big favourite of mine. I um, it's only recently ceased publication, actually, only a couple of years ago. Um, and um, I, I wish I bought it more more recently, actually, because I picked up the last one. Um, and I originally stopped reading it because I found it getting a bit childish. Yeah. Um, but I picked it up, and it was really good. The last issue, and I thought, oh, I wish I'd pick this up more because um, more recently they put it in the thing that magazines do sometimes, where they conceal the whole magazine in a cardboard kind of sleeve yeah that you can't penetrate can't read it, it in the and, shop and it, it just it, it's a bad idea i think because I, okay i'm going to flick through it and i might have a little look at some things that interest me if the, if the magazine doesn't generally interest me i won't buy it but if it does it's got a few articles in it i'll, I'll i might buy it you yeah know? but if i can't do that if it's in, in a sleeve so i'm not I'm not going to buy it what no matter what you put on the front really well yeah so yeah, i agree with that yeah, partly contributed to its, to its downfall, I don't know. But gen, then generally, of course, the big issue is the internet. I was going to say, I, I think magazines are... A, uh, uh, definitely mass market magazines, I think, yeah. are a dying industry, I'm afraid. You know, it's, yeah. all, it's all online now. But, um, I mean, I think it, in the same way that, you know, we both prefer physical media over digital uh, copies mm. of games and things, mm. I think it's th- there's something that, that's that same sort of tactile nature of oh, a magazine yeah. that, you know, you could get exactly the same information presented on a website and for somehow somehow it's not as appealing as having a nice laid out glossy magazine. And Yeah, I mean, I still love a magazine. I mean, yeah. I, I collect Retro Gamer regularly um, and that is a games magazine that is doing well. I think because of it harks back to that time and that that audience already loves magazines anyway. So I think, you know, that that it's a perfect fit for them really. And I, I, as you say, you can get it all from the internet, but you kind of have to sort of search for it yourself and you end up, it's a lot, it's it's the same way with a lot of digital things these days, such as Netflix. You you only end up taking in what you want to take in Hmm. and you don't, the great thing about a magazine, especially like a multi-format one like Games Master, was you flick through and you would see what's going on elsewhere that you wouldn't necessarily seek out to find information about. Yeah. So, you know, I, I was aware of, you know, various PlayStation games because of that. I didn't own a PlayStation. I didn't necessarily interest in PlayStation, but I was aware of certain things happening. Um, and you would just generally get a, a better sense of what was going on in a magazine that's been curated for you rather than, you know, you could go on a website and there'd be loads of articles and things, but you wouldn't necessarily click on them. You'd just see a little picture and, you know, a little bit of text. And whereas this, this you'd see the whole thing presented yeah. to you. You'd see images and you, you might see something in there that piques your interest, which you wouldn't see on a little link. Yeah, that's true. And I hmm. think as well, I think magazines benefit greatly from having an editor. Yeah. Um I think, especially now, that with the you know the upcoming Xbox Series X and PS Five, it's hard to get excited about them online 
because mm. there's so much fanboyism and there's so yeah. much you know that this is a whole thing of people you know making up fake rumors about the console that they don't like to try <laughs> and make it look bad and all this kind of stuff mm. i remember when the ps2 came out in the run up to the ps2 even like not not just specifically the PlayStation mag- magazine because obviously they're going to shill for it like there's no tomorrow. But yeah. even, like the multi-format magazines like um, Computer and Video Games magazine CBG, yeah, um, there was just, always just so much excitement about the new consoles coming out. You know, yes. there wasn't there wasn't any I don't know there wasn't any sort of cynicism or fanboyism it was just everyone was excited about this cool new stuff that's happening Mm. um and i think having an editor you know to filter out all that kind of you know the the naff side of things and just focus on what's what's important i think that really helps and i think a lot of that's been lost in the, the sort of internet side of things yeah i definitely agree the problem with the internet is you get everyone's opinion all at once yeah and you don't know what to believe so yeah the idea of curating things and, and cutting things out is is great and as you say about the, the passion particularly in multi-format magazines where they didn't have a particular bias towards one side or the other you know you would really get a, a really good sense of the picture and and you would get these passion from these guys who you know love games and you know do all the imports and they can tell you what's coming up and things like that and back in the day being in the uk we would get things very late yeah, we so would, you'd yeah. see things very much earlier on in the magazines, and you get you know these guys clearly passionate about it, playing it ahead of time, and it, it was it was just great. It was brilliant. You you get so much personality out of the magazines from that. I actually remember. I, I found it. I can't remember the name of the magazine now. It was Sega. It wasn't Sega Power. It was a Sega magazine, but I can't remember what one it was. Um, I did find a scan of it online, so I'll have to try and find it again sometime. Um, but it was in the run-up to at Sonic 2 being released, and all they had so far was the, a screenshot of Emerald Hill Zone uh, with the little corkscrew section in, mm. in Emerald Hill. Mm-hmm. And it was a very low-res screenshot, and that's all they had. Um, and... Basically, they didn't have anything to report on other than that. So they did this sort of two-page article uh, with all these screenshots and things of what they imagined Sonic 2 will feature. And oh, as wow. a kid, I thought it was really fascinating. They had, they had like, um, a screen. They do, they'd mocked it up. It all looked re- really sort of kind of legit. Hmm. And they um, postulated that you'd be able to collect rings and then trade them in for different power-up shoes. You'd have shoes that could make you stick to walls and shoes that make you fly and shoes that make you, you know, go underwater and all these kind of things. And hmm. they'd mocked up, like, different special stages and... You know, they and like you say, it's just the passion of it. They were obviously so excited about this game that they just had a, a brainstorm session of things they'd like to see, and not even that being enough, they then gone ahead and mocked it all up in like proper yeah. looking screenshots and things. And they'd got obviously got really carried away with it, but it's you know, I love that kind of thing. As a kid, I really I found it really engaging. Mm, that would be amazing to see now, looking yeah. back on it, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very good. It's um, yeah. they're sort of a time capsule as well in that sense, aren't they? Oh, you get a sense yeah. of the excitement from there that you wouldn't necessarily get from a sort of um, you know snapshot of the internet or whatever, because it would yeah. be, you know it's, it's harder to track all that down. Um, but yeah, that's that's lovely, isn't it? It's really yeah, good. yeah, it's really good. Yeah. I, I I would I would definitely try and if I can find the the name of the magazine and the, the scan of the magazine, um, I'll post it on the Twitter feed so people can check it out because it's really cool. Yeah. There's a, a section in there they did a review of Splatterhouse Two, and yeah. one of the guys really loved it, and one of the other reviewers got a real bee in his bonnet about the fact there's a, a level where you chainsaw the demon babies. And he was like, oh, I think this, this is going f- way too far. This is all, oh, no, I don't like this at all. And it's just really interesting to see the sort of the attitudes towards games as well at the yes. time. It's, you know, yes. it's, yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Computer and Video Games magazine yeah. uh, fooled me at least three times, maybe at least two times, possibly more, because I was an yeah. idiot kid, with their <laughs> annual April Fool's joke. Uh, um, the first one that they fooled me on was a screenshot of Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Lara Croft, Mario, and something like that um, in a football game, um, like <laughs> FIFA 97 or whatever the football game was at the time. Yeah. And they 
made it up like it was going to be like a hidden all-stars team with all the great video game characters all on this football team. I bought it hook, line, and sinker, mm. and I would not hear from anyone that it was fake. I thought, no, well, no, there's a screenshot. It's, it's there. <laughs> I know. It, it, in in your mind back then, it was impossible to like fake a screenshot. Yeah, Surely that the camera was it, doesn't lie. It? You yeah. Know? yeah. And the other one, um, being you know uh, a teenage gentleman that I was, uh, they did a, a, a nude raider um, hoax yeah. for yeah. Tomb Raider Two, uh, mm-hmm. where you had to make Lara jump up and down on the bed <laughs> in Lara's home to the rhythm of. Never ever by All Saints. <laughs> I fucking believed it. I I, I think I, I remember I, that one. Yeah. I I believed it. Did you? Mm. Yeah. I think I think all the teenage boys believed it. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the amount <laughs> once that came out, the amount of people trying to do that would, was must have been. Oh, it's insane. But I feel I, like every year they got me hook, line, and sinker, and uh, yeah. I, I just didn't learn. Just didn't learn what <laughs> I did. But yes, uh, hopefully Ninty Fresh won't be pulling anything uh, quite as heinous as that. Um, no. So, Let's hear it. What, what, Let's what's find it out. Like? Yeah, yeah. So it's got a lovely cover, um, Mario. It's all it's all sort of um, you know um, unofficially drawn and everything, but it's really nice. Mario uh, running away from Bowser, jumping up to a question mark block with some various Mario things around Goombas, coins, etc. Bullet Bill, very nice. Uh, you open the cover, you get a little welcome message from the editor in chief. Uh, contents page um, and then an editorial. I had a quick look at this earlier. It's got some um, various sales figures of some of the Switch games that are quite interesting. The um, Animal Crossing um, managed to shift 11.77 million copies in its first 11 days. That's pretty good. Which is pretty good. It's that's not bad, good. is it? That's almost yeah. as many turnips as I lost. So, yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good, really, yeah, yeah. Really pleased for it. Yeah. Yeah, listen, yeah, I think it was the right place, right time, wasn't it, that game? Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, so 21.03 million Switches sold in the past year, 55.77 million um, total. Yeah, so it's, it's doing well, the old Switch, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say, um, mm. didn't it recently pass the lifetime sales figures of the original NES? That's right, that's what it yeah. says here, yeah. yeah. Um, so Mario Kart 8 is 24.77 million, I think that's the highest number, which is... Nuts, really, isn't it? But um, very popular. Luigi's Mansion 3, 6.3 million. Mario Maker 2, 5.5 million. Uh, Smash Brothers 5. Um, and then uh, Breath of the Wild, 4 million. It's a shame because it's an amazing game. It deserves a bit more than that. Mm. I'm quite shocked to hear All Star Fruit Racing hasn't even <laughs> positioned on that at all. That's Yeah, I know. That's a well, shocker. Then, yeah, it says um, Nintendo stated that 82% of total revenue uh, was first party. Uh, oh, which is quite, wow. this is very high, isn't it? That really, it is. Yeah. I mean, I was. There's two sides to that. One, um, Nintendo games generally the most expensive games on there. Um, but well, in terms of the, the all the sort of indie games and everything, you know, quite a lot of people have bought games on the Switch because you can play it portably rather than you know yeah. on the PS4 or the. All the Definitely, we've Steam, discussed so. that before, haven't we? Where how some games just feel more like Switch games, yeah. even if they're multi-platform, they just feel like they'd be better on Switch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it's an interesting figure. Eighty-two percent is, is yeah. huge, isn't it? It shows it's just possible. shows that people buy Nintendo for Nintendo games, really, don't they? At the end. Oh, of the day. definitely. Yeah, uh, I certainly do. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's a good little read. Um, so there's got a, an article. Basically, they talk a lot about um, official Nintendo magazine in this because it's sort of an unofficial continuation, um, a spiritual successor, if you will, to to the official Nintendo magazine, which I used to get uh, every now and then. Um, and they're they're saying that that finished in 2014, um, and they're mentioning uh, how many is it? Ten ten of the biggest things that happened has happened in the inter- intervening years. So okay, number one, cool. um, do you want to guess any of these? Um, Let's make it into a game. Okay. Just big, big Nintendo stuff that has happened in since 2014. Uh, I would say the launch. Well, actually, when did the Wii U launch? Um, 2012. Oh, so yeah. The failure of the Wii U. Uh, yes. Um, Is that on it? Demise of the Wii U. Yes. Six. yes. There we go. Okay. I don't know what order these are in. Um. I don't, oh, so any, I don't think they're in any particular. Oh, they're, 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 yeah, they're sorry, they're um, chronological order. Sorry, which makes sense. Obviously, launch of the Switch. Yep. Uh, 
if it's only Nintendo focused, mm-hmm. the sad passing of Satoru Iwata. Yep, that's right. Yep, 2015 that happened. Um, Reggie fils leaving. Yep, that's the last one, number 10, 2019. Um, I don't know, what else? Okay, so you've got the launch of Amiibos in 2014. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The new Nintendo 3DS, um, eh, which was just the last, the last model of 3DS, wasn't it? So, I mean, it's just, they made loads of those, so it's not that big. Um, uh, NES and SNES classic minis. Oh, of course, uh, that's, yeah. That's pretty big, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty big. Uh, their foray into mobile gaming. Quite oh. a bit, uh, I mean, not personally for me, but, you know, no. big, uh, Nintendo, significant Nintendo news. I was going to say, I suppose it's a, a significant change of strategy for Nintendo. But, well, um, the first time you could play Nintendo games really on um, anything other than Nintendo system, I guess. Uh, properly, not officially, prop- but properly, properly, you know. In, yeah, and yeah, I was going to say there's the those hideous Zelda games and yeah, yeah, Mario yeah. Hotel, but the the first sort of mainstream proper attempt, yeah, I yeah. guess, yeah, yeah. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, that one. Uh, Star Fox Two makes an appearance on the SNES Mini. Um, Nintendo Labo. Yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, I forgot about Labo. Yeah, that Labo seems to sort of slip away, didn't it? Really? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's quite good. I had a little go because my nieces had it, and I had mm. a little go on it. It was, uh, it was quite. It was quite nice actually. There's like this little motorbike uh, thing where you sort of build a. You know. It looks like really handlebars. good fun. I would have a yeah. lot of fun with it. I think what put me off at the time was the. It was a bit expensive. I think it was like yeah. seventy quid for the um, for the robot set and something that I just you know I couldn't afford it for a bit of cardboard. No, um, no it's it's a, it's a fa- a lot of people. It got a lot of stick, but it is it's not it's not necessarily for everyone. It's really for families in particular and kids. I think. Um, so yeah, and now that I since when did that come out? That was twenty eighteen. And my daughter might quite enjoy that now. Perhaps I'll see if I can get something like that. So I never even thought about that. Um, but yeah, that, so that's uh, that was a nice little article. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a feedback section, a letters section. Um, oh, good. Of course, yeah. It's um, it, it's nothing like particularly uh, <laughs> amusing or uh, sort it's of. It's only issue anyth- one though, isn't it? It is only issue one. To be fair, they they haven't had a chance to <laughs> see anything yet. But um, yeah, it's just it's mostly people saying you know what, uh, how much they love Nintendo and how much they love the idea of the mag. I think yeah. Um, nothing, nothing like my my letter to Games Master. Unfortunately, nothing, nothing that cringy. <laughs> um, they got an interview with Tim Street, who was the editor of the first official Nintendo magazine in the UK from 2002 to its closure in 2005. I have read most of this. I haven't read the, a lot of the reviews, but I've read almost all of the articles, and that was quite that's fairly interesting. Um, that goes on for a couple of pages. Then their main article which I think perhaps goes on a little bit too long as it takes up about a quarter of the whole mag. Um, I mean, it's 35 years of Super Mario and it focuses on the pure the, the Super Mario Brothers series, so all the 2D games and all the 3D games, but not the spin-offs like Mario Kart and all the rest. Mm. Um, but it sort of dedicates a page, a double page actually, to each one essentially, um, or each sort of group of ones. So you've got uh, Mario 1... Mario 2, both versions of Mario 2, the the lost levels one and the the the, the sort of the reskins. What was it? Doki Doki Panic. Doki one. Doki Panic. Yeah, and you got um, Mario Brothers 3, Super Mario World, um, Super Mario Land 1 and 2, which we've done on the podcast. Um, Mario 64, uh, Mario Sunshine, the new Super Mario Brothers games, Galaxy 1 and 2, the 3D Land and World. And Mario Maker and Mario Odyssey, so there's quite a few pages. There's 20 pages there, and it's um, it's good. It's good. It's good. Well written, but I would say it takes up a little, a fair, fairly big chunk of the old content. It's um, a big anniversary, so it was, though, isn't it? 35. It is a big anniversary. I'm not, it should certainly be the biggest article in it because you know, I mean, with a Nintendo mag, what else would you have? What else would you feature in your first issue other than something Mario related? That's I mean, true, it, yeah. it certainly makes sense. But yeah, they're they're all well written and everything. Um, it's uh, it's it's similar to sort of, if you read Retro Gamer, it's, it's similar to sort of in style to that the sort of articles they will have in there. These sort of retrospective articles they cover each game in a, in a fair few paragraphs. You know, it's quite quite nicely done. Um, Does a magazine, when you say sort of nicely written, would you say hmm. would you say the magazine's got kind of its own 
own kind of voice or is it like a collection of like different writers have their own different styles is it like a, a unifying style that seems to sort of permeate the magazine because oh, i know I was... some magazines like um like we said computer and video games games master official playstation yeah you could think of the magazine as a whole really you could think of what the you know it's got a very standard style that goes throughout the magazine it's not mm. like a collection of essays from different writers is it is it that kind of thing or is it everyone bringing their own kind of flavor to it i think it's fairly uniform i would say Mm. Um, I think different writers are writing it. Well, obviously they are. Cause you can't, it's difficult to write a whole magazine by yourself. But um, yeah, they're fairly uniform, I would say. Um, okay, cool. But here and there, you do get um, little uh, sort of little nuggets of people's particular experiences. I think um, so. Mm. It's, it's 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 nice. It's good. Yeah, actually. good. It's hard to it's hard to take exactly when there's so many words in front of you, and you can you have to sort of remember what you've read already. Oh yeah, definitely. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's there's that. Oh, and they cover the the, the, stu- the new uh, Lego Mario stuff that's coming out as well. So then you go into the reviews. Um, it's mostly sort of I'll I'll, re- I'll list them out actually, and I'll give you their scores as well. So Burnout Paradise Remastered's first up that gets eighty percent. Mm-hmm. Uh, your favorite Fifty One Worldwide Games Ooh. comes in comes in at eighty five percent. Beautiful, I love that. Mm. Men of Culture, I can tell. Men of Culture, yeah, absolutely. Bioshock the Collection that's eighty five percent as well. Borderlands Legendary Collection, that's, that only gets a 65. I haven't read these ones, actually. Uh, the Outer Worlds, again, 65. XCOM 2 Collection, 85. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, 90%. And Pokemon Sword Shield Expansion Pass doesn't actually get a score for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. So uh, there's reviews there. It would be nice to have a bit more of uh, sort of an indie flavor to some of them. Um, so they're all sort of fairly triple A ish sort of games, aren't they? Really, yeah. Um, it would be nice to have a few indies in there, so sort of you know, just a range of because you can get some very small Switch games on there, so it'd be nice to have a few of those, maybe. It just depends on what they had available and what they were playing and stuff like that. So, yeah, and then um, we go into the final part of the mag, which is called Refresh, um, and it's uh, retrospectives and analysis for vintage Nintendo content and much more. So, they've got specifically retro articles in here so they cover super mario world which is odd because they've already talked a lot about mario so i'd have thought that they should put something else in there but there you go uh, wind waker which is a great game uh 35 years of happy nez nez article and uh there's a there's a nice fun and game section at the end which i will come to in a minute um but yeah so just so a few articles there um, again, they've gone into Super Mario World in quite a bit of detail. I mean, it's obviously it's worth an article, but given that they've had a huge Mario section already, I would have thought maybe something else, Metroid, Star Fox, something like that. I don't know. Wind Waker is a very good article. I liked, I enjoyed that, given how much I enjoyed the game. The the NES one's quite good. That It's written by, um, I think, someone who has uh, put together a NES encyclopedia, um, Chris Scullion. I think it just gives a brief summary of the NES um, and a few of the unusual suspects, some uh, games that you may not have played that are available on the, the Switch online, including uh, Blaster Master, Shadow of the Ninja, River City Ransom, Wrecking Crew, Zelda 2, Star Soldier, that kind of thing. That's cool. Yeah, it's nice. Um, and then the fun and games section. Here we go. So we've got a spot the difference. We've got a word Classic. search. We've got um, a what's that game in which various box arts are blurred out. Um, oh, I love it. That's, that's yeah, lovely. very very nice. And you've even got a Where's Wally style Where's Luigi uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thing, uh, which is very good. Now this is something you don't get in in other games magazines. So I, I like the the little the le- the effort they've got in. Yeah, in I love that. Um, especially because Nintendo is quite you know uh, family friendly, so mm. the kids I think will enjoy this. Um, Spoiler alert, while Luigi is on the uh, top right hand page, and he, for some reason he's dressed as Princess Daisy. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, there's the quiz here. Perhaps uh, it's a Super Mario quiz. Okay. I thought perhaps I could, um, you know, test you on, on your Super Mario knowledge. What do you oh, think? Oh, gosh, here we go. Yeah, all right then. Let's do it. <laughs> it is pretty. I, I had a look at it um, about an hour ago. It is pretty difficult, actually. This so is some, this is where we lose what little credibility we have with our listeners. Yeah, from the Let's Nintendo uh, massive. Okay, <laughs> so some some of them are, are easy. Some they do get very tricky. There. So um, 
uh, there's 12 questions. So Mario made his first ever appearance in Donkey Kong, but under a different name. What was he called? Jumpman. Yeah, there are multiple choices, but I've, I figured oh, you'd, okay. you'd know that. Um, how many power stars can be discovered in Super Mario 64? Oh. So 110, 115, 120, or 125? 125. Is the incorrect answer. It's 120. That's what I meant, yeah. Yeah, I know. No. Yeah, I got. About, I only played about half of that, so I know. I, I, I'm gonna say I, I'm. I'm not a sort of completionist, you know. No, um, I never go for you know get every single star, get every single whatever. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah my fault there. Okay, next one. Let's do it. <laughs> Mario can become Mega Mario in only one of these games. Which is it? Any inkling before I give you the answer? Uh, I would say Mega Mario. Mega Mario, that's a, the big chunky one. Yeah. Um, uh, new Super Mario Brothers DS. Uh, yeah, that's correct. It just says New Super Mario Brothers, so any yeah, of yeah. the any of the f- new family. Yeah, that's right. Um, which is the correct name for the level in which Mario discovers a sunken ship in Super Mario sixty four? Sunken treasure, Jolly Roger Bay, Into the Depths, or Pirate Cavern? I want to say Jolly Roger Bay. Uh, you'd be correct. Ah, you good. Go. <laughs> so you've got uh, three correct so far out of four. It's not bad. Um, no, it's not bad. Uh, all of these Mario power-ups, except one, appear in Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2. Which power-up only appears in the sequel? Spring Mario, B Mario, Fire Mario, or Cloud Mario? Cloud Mario. That's correct, yeah. Uh, which of these caps does not exist in Super Mario 64? Wing cap, ice cap, metal cap, or vanish cap? Vanish cap. Um, no, it's the ice cap. Oh. That was um, a guess. I didn't know. That was, yeah, yeah, I, I guess that as well. Yeah. Who is the tallest member of the Brudels in Super Mario Odyssey? Can you name any of the Brudels to I start I can't with? name any of them. I no. mean, like, I've forgotten they had names, to be honest. No, well, they're, they're Topper, th- Harriet, Spewart, and Rango. <laughs> any idea? Not really. I kind of. I never really liked them. They remind no, me of rabbits like them, too no. much. Um, yeah. Um. I'll go with um Harriet. Uh, no, it's Rango. Oh. I know. I I thought maybe Topper because you know. Oh, because he's top, yeah, top, hat. top. I don't know, yeah. but no, apparently not. No, it's Rango. Um, which color of Cooper Trooper is able to move faster than the others in Super Mario World? Green, red, blue, or yellow? Red. Um. No blue. Yeah. Blue. Yeah. Um, which of these zones you should get this because we played this game which of these zones does not exist in Super Mario Land 2 6 golden coins the macro zone the pumpkin zone the tree zone or the mechanical zone pumpkin zone no that's in there it's the mechanical zone (laughs) we weren't paying close enough attention which Mario transformation in Super Mario Bros. 3 includes the ability for Mario to briefly turn into a statue Tanuki Mario, Raccoon Mario, Hammer Mario, or Invincible Mario? Invincible Mario. That's what I thought, but it's um, Tanuki Mario. What? I'm thinking about it. I think that's right. Yeah. I see to remember Tanuki. Are you sure? Tanuki, Tanuki Mario, that, that's his little that's floppy what it says. tail. Yeah. I don't know Mario 3 very well, I must admit. Oh, neither do I, evidently. Um, right. You want to have a quick Google to be sure. Know, but I it think. says 10A... Yeah, Tanuki Mario. Unless it's unless it's a, unless it's a misprint. Statue. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought I was. I seem to remember a Tanuki Mario being statued, but I don't know. How um, do you, ha- how do you go to turn into a stone statue? Press down on the D pad at the same time as B, but be warned that it can only be held for five seconds. I didn't. I wow. Okay. There you go. You learn something new every day. Um, how many sec? There's question eleven of twelve. How many seconds are added to the clock if Yoshi eats green berries in Super Mario World? Twenty. Ah, very. Um, yeah, twenty. Yes. Well done. Very good. I, I had no idea about that. Um, which of these enemies in Super Mario Odyssey cannot be captured with Cappy? Cheap, cheap, Sherm, Kombu, or Uproot? Kombu. Yeah. Well done. I had no idea who any of these were. Which is what's combo? No idea. Yeah. Oh, okay. No idea. I, you, I know uproot. Sa- uproot is the one. That's the the little spiky plants. Right. Cheap, cheaper the fish. Yeah. What was the other one? Sherm and combo. Sherm is. I th- is that the ones that throw the hammers? 
I don't know. I'm I'm very bad with my Mario enemy. No, yet. that's a hammer. I don't know. I know what Sh- I yeah, Sherm sure, I recognise. Combu was the only one I didn't recognise, so I chose oh, okay. that one. Oh, very good logic. Very good. Um, I'm not sure how many you got there. I think you got you got one, uh, two, three, four. No, you didn't get. Did you get the Jolly Roger Bay one? You got. I got Jolly Roger Bay. You yeah. got Jolly Roger Bay. Okay, so yeah, you got, got four. Um, I think I got about nine, nine or ten. Did you? You got. I think you got five by my count. Five. Oh, no. no, six. You got six. Oh come on! I, I got more than six. I think you got six. So you. <laughs> no, I got more than six. Come on, really? So, oh, so you got Jumpman? Yeah. You didn't get the right number of power stars. No. Okay. Fair enough. You that uh, you got New Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. You got Jolly Roger Bay. Jolly yeah. Roger Bay. You got Cloud Mario. So that's got four Cloud so Mario. far. You didn't get Ice Cap. No. You didn't get Rango. I oh, didn't mm. count. No one got Rango. No. <laughs> <laughs> Which colour of Cooper Troop was able to move faster than the others? Did you get that one? I can't remember now. No, I didn't get Green, that Green, red. No, I didn't think you did. Uh, you didn't get the Mario Land 2 one. Listen, we don't need to count it. You let's not, let's not point you fingers. Get... Okay, we, it's done. It's behind us. Well, so it was about 9 or 10. And that's, <laughs> that's good enough It for was me. 6. But I don't blame you because I think I got the same earlier when I did it. It's quite hard. It's, it's quite pretty hard. tough. You need yeah. to be a pretty, Mario, pretty good Mario fan to get all those. So well done if you did. Hopefully you were playing along at home. Um, and hopefully you did better than um, Tibbs. Oh, it's hard not to, but um, yeah, <laughs> do it. Yeah, so that's the mag, really. Um, it's it's really good, yeah. I, I liked it. It's um, it's a nice little trip down memory lane for Nintendo fans. I think you can get it at nintyfresh.net if you yes. want to pick it up. I think they were running low, um, mm. but hopefully they'll still... If there's some there, you definitely grab it, because it, it does sound really good. Yeah. Um, I obviously haven't read it, because I haven't got my copy. But I follow some of the people who do write for it on Twitter, and they're all they all seem like really nice guys, so I'm sure the magazine is 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 top notch. One of them is the the chap who is a big advocate for physical games, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's very good. Um right, the book club game. Let's do it. We've got a bit of Nintendo, we've got a bit of Sega in this episode. We've got Knuckles Chaotix in the book club. We do. Mm. And we're going to take a little break, and we're going to talk about it right after this break <laughs> that I've already mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. We're talking Knuckles Chaotix this month, which is my pick. Released for the uh, Mega Drive 32X in April 1995 in America and Japan. Um, June 1995 over here. Uh, it was developed and published by Sega of Japan, but not Sonic Team specifically. Um, or you know, just sort of various Japanese Sega people, I think. Um, it's known simply as Chaotix in Japan, and other than a brief stint on PC via the GameTap service in the noughties, there has been no official port of this game for any other system. Um, so it's emulation only, otherwise, I'm afraid. Um, because of the limited success of the game and the system it was on, it'll fetch for well over £100 now. Mm-hmm. And you've got it. I do, you? yeah. Mm. There you go. Yeah. Um, I can't say it's... Uh you know the best hundred pounds I've ever spent. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be honest. I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, you know, show my hand too soon. But no. Um... Yeah. So um, it's a it's a Sonic game of sorts. It's a Sonic spin-off game starring Knuckles the Echidna. Uh, and yeah, released for the three two X. Perhaps we should briefly touch on what the three two X was for anyone who might not have been around at the era and might not be entirely clear on what it was. Yeah, I think that's that's a good thing because I think. <sighs> The 32X, well, what we, we were talking about earlier, a Sonic Adventure we were talking about earlier where we said yeah. um, it's, you know, unfairly maligned these days. Um, yeah. I think 
the same applies to the 32X. It was basically mm. an add-on that you plugged into the top of the Mega Drive um, that enhanced its processing capabilities, basically. It was supposed to give you, um, you know, access to 32-bit gaming without having to buy a, you know, a whole new system. You could just buy mm. the 32X, plug it in, and away you go. And there's lots of... You, you can't move on YouTube for videos of people saying what a ridiculous piece of hardware it was, uh, what a failure it was, how rubbish it was, and the no games, all this and the other. I can only speak from experience and how awesome it sounded when I was a kid and mm. how desirable it was. And, you know, it was such an exciting idea when you, you know, back in the day. Um, and it is, it's not a bad bit of hardware. It never, it failed before it had a chance to really show what it was capable of, I think. Yeah, um, it, it was, it came out at the wrong time, really, yeah. because... Uh, from what I've read about it, Sega were uh, a bit worried about the the Atari Jaguar of all things um, coming in and, and sort of stealing their thunder. And they they knew the Saturn was coming, but it wasn't ready yet. So they wanted a little stopgap thirty uh, two bit system um, at a lower cost to sort of kind of get in there early. And and they were sort of marketing it as a sort of um, a lower budget three two thirty uh, two bit system for people yeah. who wanted that experience but couldn't quite save up for the next big console um but obviously people knew that the saturn was coming so it was very difficult to get you know uh developer support for it if they knew that this console wasn't going to be around for very long um which and is it a wasn't shame. cheap I, either really no it wasn't cheap that's the other thing cheap. it was supposed to be it, yeah it was about 150 quid or something yeah wasn't it? in 1994 94 was it 95 it was 94 when it came 94, out I think, wasn't it? I think, 94 yeah. 95 here probably um yeah which is not cheap then and it's still not cheap now really um so yeah that was uh that was a big part of the problem and, and yeah the, a lack of um uh, a lack of support from a lot of developers i think but um yeah so you really like the system yeah I, i'm i'm not gonna oversell it and say it's this this sort of groundbreaking amazing thing that everyone should you know should love but it's not as bad as everyone says it is. And, mm. you know, if it had had... I mean, looking at Knuckles Chaotix particularly, there's graphical effects and, you mm. know, the size of the sprites and there's things that it does that the Mega Drive it couldn't do on its own. Oh, yeah. It... You know, and that's only at the very beginning, you know, and you know what... You know the difference in any generation of games console, any hardware, the gulf of quality in between you know the the initial first batch of games that mm -hmm. come out and the games towards the end of a console's life oh, it's like a whole different console isn't it it's like a whole yeah. different console it's, so it's nuts yeah i imagine if it had been given time to really mature and mm. really you know have the developers focus their attention on it because uh, it could couple with the the mega cd as well so you could have the mega cd yeah. you know coupled with the 32x and the mega drive there could have been some really, really impressive stuff come out. Um, it's not. It was bad timing and bad marketing from Sega, rather than bad hardware. I think. Yeah, I think so. There are even games that work with both the 32X and the Mega CD, aren't there? The there Mega are. CD 32X games. I don't know how that even works. Does it come in cartridge or CD format or both? No, no. They could. They come on a CD, um, yeah. but it won't boot unless you have you know the the 32x plugged in oh, basically right. it just gives like night traps one of them um yeah. it's just a high resolution video basically and it's significantly higher resolution nothing yeah. by today's standards but at the time it would at have been time, yeah. really quite impressive mm. Mm. um the other one i think is corpse killer and sewer shark but i'm i'm not sure there, there, there was only about there's a handful it's very there's a very yeah. few number yeah yeah yeah, I, I mean, I, I kind of love the the, the, the bolt-on nature of the Mega yeah. Man's add-ons. It it reminds me of, um, if you ever watched Power Rangers, the Megazord. Yes, you know, yeah. I used to have a Megazord toy, and you could just pull, put the various like different dinosaurs together to make the, 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 the machine. It, it reminds me of that, although I never owned a Mega CD or a 32X. It's the kind of thing you read about in the magazines, and you, you really coveted. You know, yeah. because no kid had the money to afford those, you know. No, no, no. But it's it, yeah, it was such a desirable thing to it to really see the was. whole thing all together, yeah. you know. Yeah, it really was, and mm. I just love that. 
I love add-ons. I uh, it's just like a gadget thing in me. Mm. I think I just I just like gadgets. But um, with the original PlayStation, all the different cheat cartridges, and you can get video cards that plug in the back. The Saturn had a video card that you could buy for it, so you could play VCDs. I just love all these sort of expansions. The idea that yeah. you know you can do so much more than just the the base you know, console. I just think that's a really neat idea. Um, mm. And given the fact that the Mega Drive was clearly... They designed it with expansion in mind, with, of, yeah. with the expansion port, but it was yeah. the 32X was never on the roadmap, I don't think. It's something no. that they retrofitted into the existing hardware. It's just a really neat, neat, neat piece of engineering. It's just really... Mm. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Um, I can't say the same for some of the games, um, <laughs> but the hardware... Give it a little kiss. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to own one. There's not many of them around, so they're quite expensive, aren't they? But they are. Um, yeah, it's one of those things. I and the Mega CDs. I still don't have a Mega CD, but yeah. Mega it's CDs. Just... The prices of those are mental now. I remember the, when I yeah. when I first got into um, collecting old hardware and things. I wanted to to get a Mega CD. They were about no kidding about thirty pounds on eBay. Yeah. You mm. know, and you could get because. There's a well-known fault with them where the a fuse goes. It's the easiest thing in the f- in the the world to replace. You just unsold mm. the fuse, pop a new one in, and you've got yourself a working console. You could get broken ones for, for ten pounds, eleven pounds. Oh, wow, yeah. You know, and looking at them now, it's obscene the prices they go for. Some of them. Yeah, I remember I saw it in Game Station. Was it Game Station that? Yeah, they mm. had a bit of retro stuff in there as well. And I saw in the window once a a Mega Drive. It's a Mega Drive 2 and a Mega CD 2 and Sonic CD. And it was only like 30 quid or 40 quid I or something. Know. And I thought, why the hell didn't you get that? I know. I just, it was just sitting there in the window. And I'm like, I, I really, I, I'm denied about it. But I, I turned it down in the end because I just didn't think I'd play it very much. Because yeah. I think by then I had Sonic CD. And I was just assembling it, you know. But, um, I know, I can't, you know, I, I like the fact that retro gaming is is increasing in popularity in the sense that I'm glad these games are getting seen by more people and being yeah. enjoyed. But part of me can't wait for the bottom to fall out of the market. So oh, we can it's start been, getting it's been high for a long time now. And it, and it's you just, know, yeah. I just can't wait for the, the, the market to crash. And then, you know, people who want to, to actually collect them to appreciate rather than just, you know, stick them just on a shelf it, and yeah, never right, touch yeah. them. Yeah, I don't know. Shame. No judging. I mean, everyone collects for different reasons, but oh, yeah. I'm just jealous yeah, that I can't afford these things. That's what it boils down to. It is annoying, isn't it? Because <laughs> the the most most when you go out in the real world, most people couldn't give a toss about you know some mega CD or three two X thing that they've probably never even heard of. That's so what you I mean, think yeah. for most people it's completely worthless, but for the, this sliver of retro people, you know, it's just there's enough of them to just create this demand for them that's just, you know, it's mental, isn't it? I was walking home from somewhere once and I saw a Commodore 64 in a skip. Oh. And I asked them for it and they seemed really, they ummed and ahed because they seemed, they obviously thought, well, if he's asking for it, it must yeah, be worth exactly. something. Yeah. But they, they didn't have anywhere to check so they, they went, oh yeah, uh-huh. yeah, you can take it. So okay. I grabbed it, took it home, dropped it, all the keys fell off. Ah. Yeah. Oh, Sad end to that story. Oh no, that's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, before we go down a rabbit hole of, uh, <laughs> of uh, <laughs> all things under the sun, let's talk, let's go back to Knuckles Chaotix. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So, two D platformer, similar to the original Mega Drive games. In fact, I think probably built on the same engine. Really, it feels very similar. Yeah. More or less, you know. More or less. Have, more so than more recent attempts. Well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Two yeah. D Sonic from certain. <laughs> things about 10 years ago um the key difference um whereas in sonic 2 you would have tails and sonic be completely separate entities here two characters are joined at the hip by um an elastic band of ring energy um believed to come from a 1994 mega drive prototype called sonic crackers in which sonic and tails uh, had a very similar mechanic joining them together in a, in a stage um, I think it's fairly conclusive. That's where it comes from. Oh it? yeah, yeah. The, even the the music in the that demo is in the in Knuckles Celtics, isn't it? The, yeah, the, some of the right, music's yeah. the same, and yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so at some point, mo- development was moved to three two X. I think due to uh, a need for you know a big name game in there uh, to bolster the library a bit. Um, but then perhaps not too big because they they sort of pulled Sonic and Tails out of it and put Knuckles in. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. This is. Uh, I mean, obviously, Knuckles was a very popular character at the time. He just debuted in Sonic Three the previous year. You know, it kind of makes sense in a way to give Knuckles his own game. Yeah, you definitely. Know? Yeah, I think yeah, it, yeah that's a, a logical thing to do. Yeah. Um, didn't they discover? Uh, hasn't Tails Sprite been discovered in like the ROM somewhere? To uh, like there was some evidence that he was actually in the game at some point. Or am I, um, am I yeah, I that? think there's. Um, I don't know if this about the Sprite, but there's definitely spec a lot of speculation that Sonic and Tails were in it hmm. um, to begin with, along with Knuckles and all the the Chaotix characters. So speaking of which, we've got um, a, a cast of basically misfit Sonic characters, most of whom are from, from, from various corners of, of the Sonic universe. Uh, so you've got Mighty the Armadillo, um, who's probably the most easily recognisable one at the time if you ever played 1993's Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, which is an arcade game, he comes from that. Vector the Crocodile, who was going to appear in the Sonic 1 sound test as, an anima- as part of a Sonic's band, an animation, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, but then they they took it out and replaced it with the the Sega voice clip, as far as I'm aware. Oh, which is an interesting. I didn't fact know that. I think that voice clip occupies quite a relatively large amount of the memory say, in I the game. I know it takes up like a huge chunk of the ROM. Yeah, and I think they had this animation in, but for whatever reason, took it out and they realised they had some free space, so they just stuck it in the Sega <laughs> sound, and that's where it comes from. Um, and you've got Charmy B, who um, comes from some sort of uh, manga, some sort of Japanese Sonic manga. Um, the only brand new one is Espio the Chameleon. And together they form the Chaotix Group, or the Chaotix Crew, as they were named in Sonic the Comic, which is where I first discovered them. Mm. Um, and yeah, most of whom have come back in um, Sonic Heroes and then Mighty more recently in Sonic Mania Plus. So you can choose to play as any one of these characters, and any of the others can potentially be uh, your ring partner via semi random claw catcher type mini game. We'll get into the complications of like the ring physics in a minute, but as if they're not challenging enough, you've got these dud uh, characters as well called Heavy and Bomb, uh, who you tend to get lumbered with more often than not because there's like two of them in the in the UFO catcher thing, isn't there? Yeah. And um, so Heavy is 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 kind of slips around a lot and quite difficult to pull around with the the, the elastic band, and then Bomb tends to explode randomly. Um. But yeah, storyline-wise, um, so a new rocky island has emerged in the sea as a result of the power of the Master Emerald, which Knuckles, of course, guards on his own island. The island quickly transforms into a lush paradise, grabbing the attention of Dr. Robotnik, a.k.a. Dr. Eggman. Uh, he learns that the transformation has occurred as a result of six chaos rings on the island, which he creates duplicates of to power his boss machines and badniks, and believes them to be capable of summoning the Master Emerald. He also builds a giant theme park on the island called the Neutrogic High Zone, um, for no apparent reason other than to furnish the game with several different levels, I think. <laughs> but fortunately, Knuckles is also on the scene and is able to free the other trapped heroes who form the group Chaotix and assist in taking down Eggman and his robotic bodyguard, Metal Sonic. So yeah, you're all set up now. Um, what do you want to talk about first? The the game's more positive sides, or do you want to talk about the elastic ring system? <laughs> Let's go for the positives. Yeah, let's do the positives first. So it's, um, it, as we touched on earlier, it is very visually impressive, isn't it? It is, yeah. There's a lot of really, really nice effects in it. Lots of particle effects and 3D effects. Lots more colour than you would normally get in a, than the previous Sonic games. It, um, it, uh, it, it does use that 3 2 x hard. You immediately know that this isn't possible on a normal Mega Drive. Yeah, definitely. I would say. Yeah, definitely. The design of the... The, the levels is particularly sort of very abstract. It takes those kind of green hill, checkered hillsides and sort of geometric shapes and really pushes them up to 11, I would say, in this in this game. You've got all sorts of crazy shapes and colours and it's, it's very very meticulously designed, all the levels. They're really, really quite impressive, I think. It's funny because most, uh, most Sonic games fit somewhere on a scale of like abstract, completely crazily abstract, not real at all on one end and then very realistic on the other in their environments and yeah. most Sonic games fit somewhere along that line don't they and this is completely on the on the abstract end I think more so than any other game I would say yeah um, the only reason I'm being quiet is because you've chosen a positive spin on what I would I, I, the level design and what you call abstract I would call mm. hodgepodge <laughs> oh okay that's interesting um yeah, Go it's on. not. Yeah. It, yeah, it just doesn't. I, it doesn't appeal to me at okay. all. Um, 
it's not so much the the theming of the levels like like the checkerboard pattern you, de- you described for for green hill um they have different kind of color schemes and patterns and things like that it's not that so much it's it's more i don't know it doesn't seem to f- it just feels very arbitrary it doesn't feel mm. it doesn't feel like a theme park if it's supposed to be a theme park and it doesn't feel like a natural like it just doesn't it just feels it feels a bit video gamey i don't i don't really know how to articulate what i mean um well it is a video game too it is it <laughs> to be fair it, it is a video game <laughs> this video game is far too video gamey <laughs> but you know you no know, like you think of sonic um yeah. like say sonic 1 or sonic 2 they all feel like real places they all feel like okay he's in an un- underground mine he's in a metropolis yeah. area he's I in see, yes. you know where are they what is, yeah. Why, why? What is? What is this thing? Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. It is quite difficult to pin down the actual yeah. themes of the levels. I don't really levels. get what they were going for. I mean, let, let's touch on them briefly because yeah. there's there's five zones in this, and they all have five acts. Uh, but the innovative thing is that you you play them randomly. So for each zone, you will progress through the acts sequentially. But which zone you play is is pretty much random, isn't it? Yeah. So you go in. You each time you you play the game, you sort of you go through this process. You pick the character if you haven't picked him already, um, and then you you go to this machine and you hit the machine and it will stop randomly at a level and then you will go to the next act that you need to play in that level, which I thought was really innovative actually. I, I quite like that as a, it just it, it kind of adds a, adds an unknown kind of quantity to the game. I quite like that. Um, but anyway, the levels you've got is uh, are. Um, well, first of all, you start on an isolated island, which is basically a tutorial level, because the mechanics, which we will get to in a minute, are so complicated that it requires a whole tutorial level to kind of go through and make sure you understand them. Yes. And that's fairly that's pretty much your standard tropical island kind of thing. Um, then you've got Botanic Base, which is kind of a greenhouse, would you say? I think that's yeah. one of the more easily recognizable yeah. environments. Um, Speed Slider, which is the most theme parky one, certainly. Um uh, and it's kind of a you know carnival kind of level, I suppose, and uh, roller coasters that kind of thing. Marina Madness, which is um, a marina. A marina. Um, and then yeah, the last two are, are certainly the most difficult to pin down. You've got Techno Tower and Amazing Arena, and they're both kind of mechanical levels. One of them's more outside, one of them's inside. So I think you you can pin them down to it, sort of types of level, but I know what you mean when you get in there. There is a lot of crazy stuff going on, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. It, like I say, it's difficult to really put into words. I'm struggling to to explain exactly what I mean, but it just doesn't feel. I don't know. It just doesn't. It just feels very weird. Very nuts. Very yeah. nuts. Ele- there are elements of Sonic CD are like this as well, aren't they? Yes. Sonic CD yeah. is quite psychedelic in that sense, and that's the, it's, 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 I think it probably takes inspiration from that more than any other, the visual style of that. Yeah, definitely. And I've had the same complaints about Sonic CD as well. It's, yeah. it's, it's the same, it, it's interesting you say that. Yeah, it's, it's that same kind of thing. Mm. You get zones like Collision Chaos in Sonic CD that are just, Literally, you cannot say where you are in that zone. That's like probably the most creative one because it doesn't adhere to any kind of <laughs> preconceived, yeah. and the name doesn't give anything away either. So it's um, yeah, but that's that's another matter. Um, but yeah, so I take your point. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, I think what we can both agree on though is they they do come with a great soundtrack. Each oh, superb! Yeah, really, very really very good. good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's sort of normal high quality Sonic stuff. Really, very mm-hmm. catchy. Some nice ones in there, particularly Marina Madness and Speed Slider. I would say. Yeah. Um, good 3D special stages. I, I love the yeah. Well, probably my favourite special stages mm. of of that era of Sonic. Yeah, because we did. Um, I haven't mentioned this yet, but I did a Twitch broadcast of this, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Um, which you and our good friend Rick uh, joined kindly joined in on. Um, I had a good time with that actually. Yeah, I didn't, it was good fun. Um, I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't sure. What, I've never been sure what to make of Twitch, but I, I kind of see the appeal now because we were sort of. Well, I was I was able to talk and you were typing in the message, and it was quite nice to get some that sort of dialogue going while playing. It was, yeah, it was, it was quite fun. nice. So I, I played a few levels of it, um, and yeah, you mentioned then that you you like the, uh, the special stages in particular. They're sort of um, going through a hexagonal tunnel, aren't they? And it, and it does show off the three uh, three directors' capabilities quite well compared to yeah, the Mega Drive. Yeah, definitely. Drive, I mean. There's, um, I mean, they're simple polygons, but they kind of work 
I think, because you go through this tunnel. It's quite impressive for the time, I think. And you've basically got to catch the blue spheres, similar to the Sonic 3 and Knuckles one, but you've got to get a certain number of them. It's kind of a mix between the Sonic 3 and Knuckles and Sonic 2 special stages. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, like Sonic yeah. 2. Yeah, they're a good clan. I think they feel, to me, it, they feel a bit more fair than Sonic 2. Um, yeah. I always found Sonic 2 a little bit frustrating, especially if you play with oh, Sonic yeah. and Tails. Oh, yeah, definitely. Famously, it's, it's, yeah. Um, it, yeah, and it's very, very unfair. Yeah. The Sonic 1 special stages, again, you could be doing really well, and then for apparent, no apparent reason, it'll just bounce you into the one of the gold yeah. signs, and then that's it. Yeah. You know, um, the Blue Sphere ones from Sonic 3 and Knuckles, um, yeah, they're, they're really good. I've I got no problem with them. Um but again, sometimes I just I don't know. I just felt I just these one these ones felt like more. They just they just felt fair. I, if I messed yeah. up on this one, I felt like it was my fault. I messed up. It wasn't just something that I randomly bounced into something. I think. Yeah, exactly. They they um there was six of them because there's six chaos rings. But uh, I got to the third one and, and tried and tried and tried. I kept failing on it. But every single time I felt yeah that's fair. I didn't react to that drop quick enough. Yeah. I didn't get enough. Blue spheres, I ran out of time, that kind of thing. So yeah, you're right. They are good. They are fair. Um, yeah, got no problems with them really. Yeah, they're very good. Yeah, um, that's where my list of positives end. <laughs> I don't yeah. know about you. <laughs> uh, so that's about the same. Um, <sighs> two of your positives were my negatives. Well, two of my, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the level layouts, like we like we discussed. Um, your, you said you like the innovative random selection of the stages i didn't like mm. that really yeah oh, okay. I, I didn't like really? that yeah why not i have interest <sighs> i don't know i don't know <laughs> I, I just i just i just find it annoying i mean generally i would prefer if i had to choose one or the other for all sonic games i would prefer the linear route but as a little as a side thing especially for a spin-off game i thought it was a nice I a think nice it... touch you know there's no reason to have it as linear, it might as well do that. It know, probably is just resistance to change on my part. <laughs> okay, it really is. Uh, it's <laughs> it's kind of. I just kept thinking. I don't know if it's not broke. Don't fix it. What's wrong with zone one, two, three, or zone one, two? You know, I yeah. It's it, it's me. It's it's not mm. the game. It's me. But I didn't like it. Yeah, there were actually there were. I do have another positive. Um, the the they all have um four different times a day. Which oh is yeah, quite good. that is quite the, good. Yeah, the game progresses. You do a couple of levels in the morning, and then a couple of levels in the afternoon and evening and night. And each level has a has a palette of for those times of day. Yeah. So it does mix up because there are only five levels. There's five acts, and the gameplay in particular does get a bit samey. There is that at least to sort of that is a, visually that is change really it up a nice. Bit. Yeah, I re- mm. I wish if there had been a, a full on Sonic game on 32 X. I would have loved to have seen that implemented, like a you know Green mm. Hill at sunset, or yeah. you know, that would have been really nice. So it's yeah, lovely, that yeah. is a good positive. I, I wish yeah. they'd do it more. Yeah, yeah. they, they ha- really haven't done it very much at all. Sonic O Six was going to have it originally, but they binned it in the end. Um, but yeah, should we um, should we move on to the negatives? Um, how much time have we got? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a long episode already, actually. So my. <laughs> So let's go to this elastic band thing, which is the yeah. elephant in the room. It's not good, is it? Really? It's I mean, not it's, a, good. it's a pretty crackpot idea. I mean, uh, it's it's. It feels to me like Sonic Crackers was some just some demo that they put together, just some idea that someone had. They said, "Oh, yeah. what, what if we have them connected together with an elastic band?" So yeah. they put together the Sonic Crackers thing, and I imagine they must have spent so much time putting together Sonic Crackers that mm. one of the higher ups said, "Look." This better turn into a game. <laughs> <laughs> you spent three months making this. I want yeah. a game out at the end of it. So they had no choice but to turn it into something. And Knuckles Chaotix was, was the end result. You may be right. I think the physics behind it probably quite complicated. Yeah. Because there's clearly a lot of kind of variables to go that goes into it that's, very, that's not particularly obvious to the user no it's it's very complicated you know there's lots of momentum and yeah. and you know um physics at work there it's definitely it's incredibly hard to predict what's going to happen yeah if you, you'll go on a spring sometimes and the two characters will just kind of propel themselves through the air 
just <laughs> really kind of oddly yeah you know so you'll you'll go really this crazy distances very very quickly from the characters just moving back and forth and pushing and pulling each other and you could try it again and, and you just wouldn't get anywhere and you think well what's the difference what actually happened yeah what, 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 what have i done different this time yeah and it was the unpredictable nature of it that really got me i think if you you can keep playing it and you will get a little bit better at it i mean when you first play it you've got like what the hell's going on you can gradually learn how to get around it and get characters moving in the same direction yeah but it is always a chore it's a chore because the level design works hand in hand with it to annoy the hell out of you (laughs) yeah it really does it rather than have levels that actually have stuff in them the whole thing, the, the levels tend to be arranged sort of more, much more vertically and going in all sorts of crazy directions. Even the end signposts, normally you would get one at the very end of the level, like the far right side. You can go up a tower and then turn left and suddenly you'll hit it randomly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, it, you don't really know where you're going a lot of the time. You're being pushed and pulled, and pulled in all crazy directions. You'll find, you have to reach a high ledge and the, what you have to do to get to it is so sort of obtuse and difficult to understand and you'll get that you'll wind up there somehow eventually if you keep trying but it's just it was very very puzzling and the level design is, is there purely rather than to give you actual challenges that you would normally get in a sonic game it's just it, it, it's it relies on the physics to, to yeah. create difficulty basically doesn't yeah it? i think that, that that's i think that's kind of what i mean like in a traditional sonic left to right game it flows it's got a, a particular flow you know, there's different routes, upper routes and lower routes that you can take, yeah. but it's all very logical the way it, pres- you know, progresses from beginning to end. Yeah. Some of the levels here is just a flat, a f- you know, a flat base going along and then a loop up to the next level, then a flat base to the other end and a loop up to the next yeah. level and yeah. a flat end and then a loop up they to the next level. They do that so often, yeah. And it's like, why is it, what is it for? What, yeah. what, why does this exist in this world? Well, it, that's, what I th- that's what I think I mean when I say it's, it's too video gamey. The yeah. level is there just to serve as an obstacle, uh, you know, for you to use the physics with. Yes, it's not it there yeah. because it's meant to be a, a, a lush meadow and mm. there's a, a, you know, you've got to ma- navigate through it. It's, it's not meant to be anything other than an obstacle. Yeah. They almost feel like a tech demo. Yes. To serve for the, the, the physics engine. If you were trying to explain this physics engine to a... It, 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 the game's half-built, and you try to explain this physics engine to a player, you would use a level like this to show them how it all works. Yeah, exactly. But you wouldn't build the whole game You wouldn't build like the whole that. game like that, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, it is um, it is very baffling how they, they thought it was a, a good idea, really, isn't it? I mean... It's just odd. It's, it's just, very, very odd. It's a very odd. It's a head scratcher. And yeah. I remember, um, you know, we were talking about magazines, um, you know, earlier in the show. Another mm. thing that I used to, that I have fond memories of is looking through um, catalogues. Um, yeah, of course. To mm. See, yeah, what games you want for your birthday, what games oh, you want for it, Christmas, it, it, that kind of thing. The staple of any 90s child, certainly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I remember at the time this came out, it was I can't I think it might have been the Littlewoods catalogue. They had a, a, a box art of it, and it was just knuckle, yeah. knuckles catalogues. That's all I knew about the game, mm-hmm. and I remember imagining all the different things it could be. It was this 32x <laughs> game. It was Knuckles in his own game. Oh God, I can't imagine. It's so exciting. Yeah. And then eventually, when I played it, it was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. But had you played it at all before you bought the? the yeah, the I, 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 I okay. yeah, I played it emulated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> you know what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> oh, I knew what I was getting myself into. Um, okay, I thought, enough. I thought I'd give it. You know, I thought maybe I, I'd, I'd been a bit hasty with it. You know, yeah. I'll sit down and play it properly as it was meant to be. Yeah. Um. Nah. That's exactly what I thought when I picked this game because it had been quite a long time since I played it, and I, I heard actually on podcasts people talk about it quite positively, and I thought, oh, maybe I just get, I just didn't give it the right chance, but no, it's um. It's not a great game. It's not a great game. <laughs> Sorry and about that. We, we <laughs> mentioned it on the um, on your Twitch stream when you were doing it. Um, yeah. The bad mix. Yeah. They yeah. feel like a complete afterthought. It's like they got, do, don't they? It's yeah. like they finish the game and like, oh, we aren't currently. We haven't barely put yeah. any bad mix in it. It really does, doesn't it? With like, well, and a lot of them are so weirdly designed as well. They're very odd <laughs> they compared to other. Bad some mix. of them don't have any attack. 
Greeks. No. You know, one of them just, one of them, like, I know, um, like, the caterpillars in Sonic 1, they don't really do much, but at least they got spikes. There's, yeah. like, a caterpillar one on this, it just slides towards you, and it's got no no spikes, it's got no he looks, lasers. He looks like a cross between a caterpillar and one of those school guillotines that yes. they use to cut paper. <laughs> yes, he does. And he sort of slides his way towards you. And most of them just sort of sit there because yeah, they, they're just they, totally taking a back seat to these physics. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing else you can do because you don't really spend else. long enough near them to do for them to do anything interesting. <laughs> no, it's literally it, it literally just feels like a last minute thing. Oh, well, we've yeah. got to have some robots in there. Just get ask John to draw some sprites and we'll just have them <laughs> in quick. <laughs> well, he's on his lunch. It's fine. It's fine. You can do it when he gets back. <laughs> It really does feel like that. Like I posted on Twitter a, a, a screenshot of one of them that's basically just a camera with a tripod yeah. legs, and he just wanders around really <laughs> awkwardly. And it's just, what the hell is that? I mean, it come on. It reminds me of um, when we were talking about Pokemon, how there's a Pokemon that's yeah. just a set of keys. Yeah. It's, it's just, we've run out of ideas. This is, this is the Sonic equivalent of the <laughs> later Pokemon, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It is funny. Um, what, should we, what else should we talk about? I mean, we haven't really touched on the characters. they kind of got different abilities, haven't they, to some extent? To Obviously some extent, got, I suppose. You got they're, they're fairly interchangeable. Fairly. But I, what I would say is, if you are struggling with the, the physics, pick Charmy. Because yeah. he literally just flies. Just flies. He's got no, unlike Tails, he's got no limit to his fly. <laughs> and you just jump and he'll fly in whichever direction you're pointing. Yeah. So you can just kind of zip through these levels, to be honest. Yeah. And I had to stop myself from doing that because I thought, I've got, I've got to play this properly because this is basically <laughs> just a cheat. And you can just go wherever you want, really. And just have the other characters hanging around, <laughs> dangling. Would you, say that, would you say this game marks the beginning of the introduction of infinite new characters into the Sonic universe. I mean, by numbers, you would have to argue that, yeah, because it kind of dumps a whole load of them on you, basically. I mean, I know they said they, they all come from different places, but most mm-hmm. of them are essentially new as playable characters. Because I know we, and, we, um, we had, you know, Knuckles was, you know, obviously a, a main character. Yeah. And, you know, Metal Sonic and Amy Rose were in Sonic CD, but they weren't really front and centre. They were, no. you know... Um, but I think... I think this game really started the, you know, here's a whole bunch of new characters, and every game since then has just kept piling them on. Isn't it? I mean, it's a cr- criticism that's usually levelled against post Sonic Adventure, yeah, um, era Sonic, um, but generally when people talk about it, they refer to the Chaotix, particularly when when they were brought back in Sonic Heroes. So, and this is where they came from. So, you yeah, you could certainly argue that. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, most of them are. Uh, I mean, uh, they're, they're they're mighty and Espio are pretty cool as characters. I think Vector and Charmy less so, and obviously Heavy and Bomb are just completely <laughs> crap. The trolls. But, I mean, I don't even know why they're there. Really, I mean, the physics are hard enough. You don't need these two terrible characters <laughs> that you just get lumbered with more often than not. You know, it's really really odd decision that. Um, but yeah, they've got things that I think. Uh, to, uh, Mighty can wall jump, Espio can walk on walls, Vector can's got some sort of double jump, I think. But yeah, it's um, it's a sort of a you can uh, you can spam some of those though to sort of help you. Like Mighty's wall jump, you can there's a there's a way of doing it where you just literally hop up 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 and go to, go up to the next thing. So it's it's all a bit nuts, isn't it? Like they yeah, it, unlike regular Sonic, where it's very well thought out. You know how high Sonic can jump. You know that he can't get up there. You know that he has to do this in order to get up there. You know exactly what where you are, and the physics never get mental. You, it, while you can reach insane speeds, you always do it very deliberately. Like you mm. know how to pick up speed, you know how to slow down. That kind of thing. It's very deliberate. I mean, this literally anything can happen. Um, you've got item boxes that make you really, really big and really small. Um, you've got that. Um, but but ring to what end? Thing. I know. Yeah. I mean, it's it's weird, isn't it? I mean. <laughs> But especially when you get small, because that's a power down, because you can't even do anything. You, you just can't, can't jump no. at all. And, and the big has the opposite thing. You just jump up really high. And it's all. I, it, it feels it like they've just thrown it in at the last minute just to add even more complexity to the game. Yeah, or, like you were saying, it's just a tech demo to show the sprite yeah. scaling of the, you know, Kinda, yeah. of the 32X. It does show off those kind of abilities and quite well, but do you need it? Do you need it? Maybe what not. It? Not no. really, no. Is it fun? No. Not really. <laughs> no, no, not really. No, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty out there as a game. Um, 
Though Amazing Arena has a really annoying feature with the clock. Oh. Because I remembered when I played this, I remembered something about the clock, but I couldn't think that was really bothersome. Basically, in every act, there's this clock that you have to find. Uh, and there's a button next to it, and you turn it on, and you turn on the lights in the whole zone, the music changes, and that kind of thing. The thing is, you, in order to complete the act, you have to do this in order for it to be accepted as a completion. But regardless, if you don't do it, you can still touch the check the uh, signpost at the end. Yeah. There's no actual mechanism to stop you from going there. It's just that if you do that without touching the button, it'll just say, I can't remember what it says, but it doesn't accept it. It shows you the picture of the clock and saying, try again. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I completed it. I mean, who cares? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, who cares? It's just that's an, uh, just a bad bit of design, really. Um, just yeah i think you know, there's not, there aren't really many other than that there aren't really many gimmicks in the level to differentiate themselves you tend to get like the same sort of transporters that move you very slowly from one point to another um and there's not very much in the way of interesting features that each level has um apart from that one which is a pain in the ass so yeah it's um and I, I don't know about if this was just the emulation or whatever but i, I had a few like frame rot, frame drops, and quite a lot of slowdown in places. Did you do you experience that on the original hardware? Yeah, you do get a little bit from time to time. More so than in the original games, it does tend to struggle a little bit. Um, I mean, or even those, even the old ones, uh, you got a bit of slowdown when you lost a lot of rings. But yeah. it seems to happen even more in this one. I, I found. Yeah, it's yeah, it does struggle a bit. Mm. I think that's all I've got, really. <laughs> it's um, all I've got. I think. Um, <laughs> I mean, as negative as we've been about it, I I can appreciate yeah. it for wanting to do something different. Yeah. Um, I can appreciate the ambition of it. Um, I'm glad it. I'm I'm glad it's in in my collection. Hmm. Um, it's a rarity. Maybe wish it's a, it's I hadn't a... paid as much for it. Yeah, you probably didn't need to do that, but <laughs> <laughs> it didn't need to be mint for one thing. If you're just going to play it. <laughs> no, no, it, it didn't really. But um, you know. <laughs> I'd just been made redundant. I needed a little pick-me-up. I thought, oh, that'd be yeah, good. Yeah, no, I don't play. That, that, no, that'd I know. be good. That'd be I good. Um, yeah, and I opened it and tore the box. <laughs> 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 I regret nothing. Um, yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's, it's a, to- that, that in itself is a talking point and having it on your shelf is a talking point. Yeah. Really. Um, it's nice, to, it is nice to have a game that's worth an obscene amount of money just sitting there, isn't it? You know, I mean, it's even if you've also paid an obscene amount of money for it. I wouldn't. Uh, I can't remember how. I think I only paid. I think it was a hundred and twenty or hundred and thirty yeah. pounds or something. So that's, it wasn't. That... It wasn't as, as insane as some of the prices now. But oh yeah, and for non mint one, that's that's it's more than that. I think. Yeah. Pretty much, even just the cartridge, you're looking at around that price. I think so. It's yeah. um, certainly it's gone up a lot. It's probably the most expensive Sonic game out there. They tend to be a, a cheap bunch because they're quite mass produced. But obviously, this wasn't because it was on a failing console. Um, but yeah, that's, um, I think we're, the verdict is, um, is pretty much clear, isn't it? I mean, uh, well, as a Sonic fan, I would recommend checking it out because it is a, is an oddity. Yeah. It, you know, it's the origin of these characters. It's, you know, it takes the original Sonic gameplay, tweaks it a lot to, you, you I think you should, as a Sonic fan, everyone should play it if they're Sonic fans, because it, it's just an interesting curio really of the whole series and it's yeah. it's never been ported to anything else um so it's quite hard to find i don't think sega are particularly proud of it um but it is something that the the community is very well aware of and there is some demand to get it you know remastered to some extent i, I am but i'm surprised it hasn't it, it never ended up on like um sonic gems collection or it's or perfect like it would that. be perfect for yeah. that i think they just couldn't be bothered to emulate it because weirdly the, there is gems collection is full of artwork of mm. the games that are on it and chaotix as and if it chaotix. were on there yeah. so it is weird maybe it was intended to go on there but they couldn't get the emulation right in time maybe i don't know yeah it but it would be. have been perfect for that because it's that collection is full of obscurities anyway yeah i mean it's ta- yeah it's tailor made for it really but um yeah Mm. Yeah, doomed to obscurity, I'm afraid. But um, yeah, we did get one comment from Rick. Oh, cool. Um, he didn't actually play it, but he obviously he watched the stream of it, and uh, he had this to say. Rick, the retroish gamer, says, uh, "Not played it myself, but after watching you stream it, I don't think it's for me. 
I did enjoy what I heard of the soundtrack and the visuals are very striking, but the gameplay just looks like it would frustrate me. I can't see why anyone thought the tether mechanic was a good idea. <laughs> so, I mean, that's pretty much summary of what yeah. everything we've just explained, Small, really, isn't really. it? So, yeah, thanks for that, Rick. Yeah, so that's that's it, really. Knuckles Curtix in a, in a nutshell. In a shell a nu- of a nut. In a nut shell. Oh, a nut. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Um, your your next book club game yeah. is the next book club game is a GameCube game. Oh, and we are going to be playing Chibi Robo. Oh, brilliant! I yeah, I've always wanted to play this. Cool. That's cool. I've um, I think I can emulate this, so that's fine because I think it's quite pricey, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's all right. Have you got it, or are you? No. No, okay, um, I think it, if people want to play along, um, emulation might be the way to go. I don't know if it ever got like a virtual console release. I doubt it because they didn't do GameCube, did they? Um, uh, no, um, no. You could probably play it on a hacked Wii, though. Or yeah, Wii U, you probably could if you want to do that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, cool. They made the sequel on 3DS, didn't they? Uh, yes, they did, but it wasn't mm. wasn't very well received. Ah, uh, okay. No. I don't. I. 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 I this it's one of those games that I've always seen and I want to get round to playing, but I don't actually know much about it. Okay, so um, it's going to be well, interesting. Is it a platformer? Is it? Is this pla- Yeah, it's it's kind of a yeah. I in its base sense, it's a platformer, but there's, there's right. a lot more. It's it, it's its own unique little thing. Um, I won't say too much. I want you to go in. You know, if you haven't played mm. it before and you don't know much about it, it's best that you go in fresh and okay. you know, not have your opinions tainted in any way. So, um, mm. okay. yeah, cool. I, th- I think we'll. I think we'll both, if not both, enjoy it. We'll both have some interesting things to to discuss about it. So, uh, yeah, Chibi Robo. Oh, I really look forward to that. Excellent. Cool. Yeah, good. I'm in the process of getting all my GameCube games set up on my emulation thing. So. Um, Yes, the perfect timing. Lovely. Hmm. Right. <laughs> um, let's round things off then, shall we? Let's um, do it. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us, podemup at gmail.com. Um, our website is podemup.net. And on Twitter, we are at podemup. And on Twitch, we are twitch.tv slash podemup. Yes. Which I um, I could stream um, Chibi Robo, I suppose, couldn't I? Oh, yeah, you could, um, yeah. yeah. I, might, I, might, I, might, I might well do that. Keep an eye on Twitter. I'll tell you when I'm going to do it. Yeah, I, I, kept do me- it. I kept meaning to stream some Fall Guys, but, you know, life yeah. got in the way, as it often yeah, does. Right. But, um, yeah, I will make an effort to, to do some streaming as well, because it does, it, you know, it does, it's, it's fun to to have that live interaction. It is, yeah. I must know. admit, I never, I never really got it. Um, before doing it, but actually doing it and experiencing it, um, I kind I kind of get it. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Yeah, well, I mean, it, yeah. it kind of reminds me. But you know, back in the day when we used to do, um, I used to do the um, sort of shoutcast internet radio type mm, stuff. Yes, it's got that same kind of feel to it. It's you know, yeah. it's doing something fun and having you know the the live you know people with you. It's yeah, it's it's good fun. I can see the appeal. I was going to sh- say it's a shame that you can't get other people with mics on it but then because the stream is a few seconds behind it would be there would be a bit disjointedness to it yeah it would all fall Mm. it would all all lag behind i do think we could do we we could set something up because we mentioned it before i think maybe do like when there's the next big event live event we could do some live reactions or something on twitch yeah and that might be a fun thing to to do nintendo direct maybe or something yeah something like that so yeah there's there's potential things that we can look into doing there once we get the once we get into the swing of things yeah Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's everything. Yeah, p- uh, please get in touch with us. It would be lovely. Um, in general, just to have a little chat with us. Um, yeah, on all the above things, uh, give us ratings on i not iTunes, Apple Podcast, whatever it's called now, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we've had any more since our uh, five star and our one star. <laughs> our one star. <laughs> have we? I haven't checked. <laughs> Oh no, it makes me feel bad. One star. Yeah, I don't know. We obviously rubbed someone up the wrong way, but you oh, know, no. someone else loved us, so you know. And I don't think it was either you or me. So there you go. No, still only two ratings. Yeah. One five star, one one star. Yeah, it was, makes us to a nice even three star. We're perfect. right in the middle. We're middle perfectly of the road. average. <laughs> Pot them up. You're perfectly average podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. On that note, 
let's say goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mm-hmm.